Gentle White Moonlight Redemption of Worthy Little Empress. Huan Ning is the most ruthless swordsman in the demon slaying department. When encountering demons, he will be killed with one strike, and is known as the demon slaying sword by the thirteen halls of the three departments, five departments, and five departments. One day, she learned that she needed to marry a shark king from the western wilderness. Huan Ning. Is killing a husband illegal? Shark Jun is gentle and rich in gold, kind and rich in gold, affectionate and rich in gold. As the poorest imperial concubine in the heavenly realm, Huan Ning's mood is very complicated. One day, Jiao Huaning came up with a legal way to inherit her husband's property. When she was surrounded by the formation, she pointed to the nine evil wastelands and vowed, If you jump down, you can save me. Shark Jun jumped in without hesitation. However, the good times did not last long. Huan Ning failed to seize power and was banned by his elder brother. His magical power was also thrown into the nine evil wastelands. When he was struggling to survive, a familiar Dingxian sword lay horizontally around his neck. At that time, Sha Jun was already the master of the nine evil wastelands, with a gentle voice as always. Emperor Ji, very clever. Huan Ning. Dot. Keywords of the novel. Empress Dowager, she holds on to the crematorium script with no pop-ups, download the complete text of the script for Empress Dowager, and read the latest chapters of the script for Empress Dowager, holding on to the crematorium script. Chapter 1. Empress Dowager of Poverty and Sorrow. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1. Poor Empress Dowager Sang Yen died on the night Huan Ning loved him the most. On the rough sea, the Western Wilderness Demon Lord lay quietly there, and the Western Wilderness Demon Clan saw for the first time the goddess Wang Shu driving across the Tianai. She stood on a small boat, holding his coffin in one hand and his sword in the other, looking up at the overwhelming demon race rushing towards the sea. There is a sword called Ding Xian, which sets the world Xianming and burns down the demons of the eight wildernesses. A sword breaks through ten thousand enemies, and the heavenly punishment pillar is also on the verge of collapse. It was also that time that they finally understood that Xiao Di Ji had always been cruel and easy to kill. She wiped off the blood from her face, tied up her disheveled hair, leaned down to kiss the young man in the coffin, and whispered, I'll take you home. The small boat gradually entered the distance, and the sea was calm and calm. She asked Jianling, why do you still need to help me? You have only worshipped him for the most in your life. Jianling remained silent for a long time, because he said, he will protect you at any time, even if it is. You killed him with your own hands. Blood stained the river and sea for three thousand years, and the moon shining for eight thousand miles in the western wilderness. No more gentle moonlight from yesterday. The bright moon gradually rises, and its radiance brushes over Sigu City, illuminating the mountains and streams behind the city. Finally, it stops in a deep and pitch-black cave. This kind of cave is not uncommon here, with ordinary rocks piled up and an indistinct tree growing on the edge. What's rare is that there is a pair of eyes inside. These eyes have been closed for three days and are naturally covered in bloodstains. She was very sleepy, but eighty-one pieces of soul-binding silk wrapped her like Zongzi, hung her here, and had been sucking the aura in her body intermittently. They firmly bound her, and some soul threads pierced into her veins, constantly absorbing spiritual power and vitality, causing her to gradually dry up. This is a rare magical tool. For mortals, it is just an ordinary thread, even somewhat fragile. However, for the immortal race with spiritual power, it is the cruelest form of criminal law. Strands of blood overflowed, staining the snow.white soul silk red. The owner of the eyes, Emperor Ji Huaning, let out a deep sigh, she shouldn't be greedy for that money. Everything needs to start from five days ago. At that time, Huan Ning was still sleeping in Jiu Wei Mountain, but the debt collector flew all the way from Chaochen Sea. In an unknown valley of Jiu Wei Mountain, the pear blossom forest swayed with its branches, 
and the thin clouds in the sky were scattered. The debt collecting fairy stepped on her sword and broke through the wind, landing in the pear blossom forest in the blink of an eye. Empress Dowager. The female fairy's facial features are beautiful, but her aura is ethereal, making her look cold when combined. She withdrew her sword and bowed to the beautiful flower with her sleeves tucked in. There were some subtle undulations in the dense flower bushes, whether it was startled by the wind of the imperial sword or the people inside became impatient and disappeared in an instant. The female fairy was not distressed either. She kneaded the formula and took out a red-faced hard paper fold from the Chinkuan bag. The complaint has been reported to the Chouchin department. No matter how tired the Empress G is, she needs to sign this document before making a decision. There is still no response. The female fairy opened the fold and read on her own, the sword-wielding envoy Huan Ning indulged in private business, burning the Mekong River to the stem, destroying the temple of the Mekong Mountains, and injuring innocent mountain spirits. His numerous crimes are difficult to record. After the joint examination of the three leaders of our Chouchin Dao, he was fined his salary. Do you have any new tricks besides salary? The words, salary, seemed to poke into his heart, and Huan Ning couldn't help but interrupt the fairy's endless accusations of crimes. He turned over and sat up to complain, I haven't received salary for a hundred years. She ran away from home for three years, relying solely on drinking wind to survive, and also being deducted from her salary. No problem, Emperor Ji has only been in the demon slaying department for a hundred years. How much was fined this time? I have gathered a hole for Empress Dowager. In nineteen years, you will not receive any salary for the next two hundred and ninety years. Emperor Huan Ning closed her eyes in pain and said, Qing Fan, you can't treat me like this just because you have integer obsessive dot compulsive disorder. Nineteen years. Nineteen years. Xie Fuchi was only fined ten years last time. Qing Fan corrected, Master Fuchi is thirteen years old. And I don't have integer obsessive dot compulsive disorder, otherwise I will give you another ten years. Okay, even if it's thirteen years. I just accidentally set fire to it. Can it be more serious than how she caused ordinary people to lose their souls? Qing Fan sneered, not careful. If it weren't for the timely reporting of the Maishan Mountain God, Maishan would have been scorched into desolation by Emperor Ji's karma, with no grass growing. It's also for slaying demons. Xiaodi Ji's voice had gradually weakened, but when she remembered the appearance of Maishan Mountain God holding on to Lord Fuchi's legs at an old age and shedding tears, Qing Fan still couldn't soften her heart. For the sake of a mere demon fox, Empress Dowager Ji was too provocative and even used her career fire. Our Chouchin Dao has always opposed the violent law enforcement of the Demon Slaying Bureau, especially Empress Dowager Ji, who has repeatedly refused to change her ways and has to be punished severely. Dot. Empress Dowager, hurry up and sign the contract, Qing Fan pinched the hour. The head of the Chouchin Bureau earns a monthly salary of 360 spirit stones and works three hours a day. It's almost an hour late now. If Empress Dowager delays any further, please make up for my salary of these ten spirit stones. Dot. With a sigh, Emperor Huan Ming finally struggled up from the flower bed and took the fold. Under the shock, pear blossoms fluttered in the air, and Empress Dowager lay on a blue stone with a graceful figure. Her skirt was as graceful as a layer of blooming epiphany. When writing, the exposed arm is slender and white, frozen like frost and snow. For a moment, even the Qing Fan fairy, who was accustomed to seeing beautiful women, was slightly mesmerized. She was quite straightforward this time, but when she handed over the folding paper, she couldn't help but frown and murmur, there is a poor imperial concubine like me in the world. I knew I wouldn't have cut off ties with Huan Yuan. Emperor Ji's appearance was very perplexing. When the Qing Fan female fairy, who had never liked gossip, threw the fold back into the Qianquan bag, she couldn't help but say, I heard that Emperor Ji's future husband is very wealthy. Xiaodi Ji raised her eyebrows lightly but did not answer the conversation. 
Sure enough, the fairy said, unfortunately. The stopping place is exactly the same. Unfortunately, it's a demon. Even if the Western Wilderness Sea is rich and the world is prosperous, even if the demon tribe was also an immortal tribe 10,000 years ago, and even if we hear that the Changling Lord is about to ascend, it cannot be overstated by a fact, he is indeed a lowly demon. However, Huan Ning from Jiuwei Mountain has a noble red-tailed phoenix bloodline. Even in the times of chaos, she was also a god who could dominate the region. She was also the imperial concubine of the Xinyu tribe, and her father and brother were both emperors. As the supreme deity, there were only a few gods who could rival her. In terms of identity alone, this was originally the most unsuitable marriage in the world, but unfortunately, it was the heavenly lord who played the matchmaker. The heavenly emperor politely issued three heavenly edicts within three days, and then the emperor of the Yu clan accepted this absurd marriage. To have a noble and exceptionally noble goddess match a prince of the demon clan. Qing Fan paused for a moment and said, Unfortunately, the crown prince of the western wilderness sea is not him. I reckon the empress will have to rely on her own efforts. Speaking of which, Huan Ning can also be considered a strange flower. The three departments, five halls, and eighteen departments of the heavenly realm are mostly composed of immortal tribes with innate immortal bodies who serve as immortal officials. Most of them have the support of their families. To be an official, one must hold an immortal position at the age of eight thousand, otherwise they will be exiled from the heavenly realm. Secondly, it is for the sake of merit. With merit, one can ascend. Only ordinary people like Qing Fan, who have no background or foundation, will care about those salaries. Backed by the ancient divine race and constantly concerned about salary, there was no one else besides Huan Ning. Hmm. Little Empress Ji was extremely surprised and couldn't help but sigh. It's really a pity. I heard that the shark tribe cried like pearls. If they were extremely poor, teaching them to cry could also make some good days. The wind passed through the flower forest, and the sky was snow.white. Qing Fan lowered her head, and the eyes of Xiaodi Ji were filled with endless spring light, without any joy or anger. She only climbed slowly onto the vine tide swing, without much sadness. This has nothing to do with Qing Fan, who only seeks survival every day. She summoned Fei Jian, who was about to leave, but suddenly turned around and asked, Have you set an auspicious time? Xiaodi Jiwu swayed on a swing adorned with flowers and casually spoke, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's definitely set. It's exactly seven days from now. The tone is light and casual, as if saying that the sunshine is very good today. Qing Fan remained silent for a moment, unsure if it was inappropriate to come and collect the bill at that time. I could only probe my divine sense into the bag of heaven and earth, search for it, and finally find a transparent jade pendant with a fairy-like luster. Hmm, congratulations, I said Huan Ning took it and shone it in the sunlight, looking innocent. This is Yuan Yang Pei's Yuan Pei, Sister Fan. Dot. I flipped through it again and found a comb. This is the material of a single tree. This is a flute made of bitter bamboo. This is. Qing Fan, sweating profusely, searched through her own family and found out in despair that she had nothing to give. Damn it, she was such a socialite who loved being single. How could there be paired things? Sister who doesn't mind, a single comb is also very good. It's difficult to support a single tree, so couples can work together. Little Empress Ji picked up the only comb that could be seen from a pile of junk and thoughtfully thought of a reason for her. Her eyes were bright and bright. After all, my sister is chasing me for money every day. Can you give me a gift, doesn't it mean she doesn't hate me? Xiaodi Ji held her hand, soft, slender, as if boneless. A faint fragrance spread over Empress Dowager's body, leaving Qing Fan unable to move at once. Qing Fan felt a bit dizzy and said, Hmm. I didn't hate you at all. Anyway, it's not that she owes her money, she's just an emotionless debt collector. I don't hate it, 
I just like it. Huan Ning hugged her waist tightly, as if there were no bones, and leaned in her ear, blowing air with a fragrant fragrance. Sister. Can I do something to smooth out my account? Hmm <laughs> hmm. No way. Being a master blogger for a thousand years, if you want to say which word is the most sensitive, it must be a fake account. Qing Fan suddenly woke up from her beauty and pushed her away. Besides, isn't this a joke? It is no secret that Emperor Ji Huaning is heavily indebted, and besides, she owes over 1.8 million spirit stones. If she really tampers with something, she will be pulled to the third company for joint review the next day. Huan Ming let out a mournful sigh and said, after getting married, we will be moving out of Qingyang Palace. Should I work for the Demon Slayer by every day? Qing Fan thought for a moment and said, isn't the Demon Slaying Department always offering a very generous reward? I heard there's a new clue from Siga City. After speaking, she felt it was inappropriate again. I was just saying it. If you really go, don't say it's related to me. After a pause, she still felt it was inappropriate. Even if you want to go, don't come to Chaochen to open a travel order for me. After finishing speaking, Lord Chao Chen, who was afraid of causing trouble, stepped on his flying sword and ran away in a flash. Huan Ning looked thoughtfully at the trembling pear blossom branches, as the wind passed through the valley and the pear blossoms drifted away with the wind, drifting into the clouds. It seems like it's time to start your old business again just for the sake of food and clothing. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Escape from Difficulties and Rely on Destiny You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Escape from Difficulties and Rely on Destiny The Demon Slaying Department has always had different levels of reward orders, which are usually sent by scattered immortals on behalf of the Demon Slaying Department and posted on a huge spiritual mirror outside the Demon Slaying Department's office. Thousands of people in the Demon Slaying Department will take on some tasks when they have free time, and there are also scattered immortals who take on them themselves. At first, it was just some normal things, such as who lost their spiritual beast, whose territory was occupied, and which prisoner was on the run. Later on, it evolved into a small matter of fighting with whom they lost and hiring people to help fight, and whose immortal grass always couldn't grow tall. After discussion, the leaders of several companies felt that it was hindering their image as the three dust companies, so they began to vigorously rectify it. The art style has improved a lot now, but the reward orders have also become very few. There is only a bounty hanging from the highest point, and anyone who steps into the Demon Slayer can immediately see it. The handwriting on it is different from all the bounty orders, it is written in blood, and after three years, there is still a strong spiritual power of the divine race contained within it. That is a demon hunting order or, in other words, a corpse hunting order. The person seeking is the ancient monster gluttony, who never appears. Although gluttony is greedy and delicious, sometimes it can swallow the fruit of a city and quench thirst with a river, it easily does not emerge and does not like the flesh and blood of mortals. At this time, it is also related to Mingyao, the sword-wielding envoy of the Demon Slaying Division who has been missing for three years. If we talk about Mingyao, there are probably not many people in the heavenly court who we don't know. It wasn't because she rose from the lower world. In less than a hundred years, she completed three levels of continuous jumping and rose all the way to the position of Sword Master, second only to the Demon Slaying Master. And what made her famous in the world, apart from her strong business skills, was more due to some scandals about sex. Mingyao is a shark fairy. The Shark Clan, the lord of the western wilderness, is also an ancient immortal clan. It was only 10,000 years ago that they offended the heavenly lord and were demoted to the western wilderness, where spiritual power was scarce. They were forever confined to the western wilderness sea by a 33,000 mile long heavenly punishment pillar. They are most famous for their unparalleled beauty, in addition to the tears of a mermaid that can withstand thousands of gold, the song of a mermaid that cries upon hearing it. Related to Mingyao are these seemingly unrelated rumors, or the extremely handsome Crane Moon Star Lord who works with her, 
or the Gong Yishan Lord who gave her the Frost Moon Sword since she ascended, standing by the edge of the immortal washing pool and bowing to the immortals from afar, there has been no interruption in the rumor of peach blossom romance. However, these are all things that catch the wind and shadow, and what the gods are fond of talking about is the fate of the stunning beauty in the lower world. I heard that he was devoured by the ancient demon beast Tao Tai with his soul and bones while eliminating demons. Due to the strange incident, no one can trace any clues, and even the top boss of the third division, Emperor Huan Yuan, personally went to investigate, but found nothing. The reward order was also personally written by Emperor Huan Yuan, and anyone who can provide directions for the feast can receive a promise from him. It is not an exaggeration to say that the promises made by the emperors of the Yu ethnic group can move mountains and seas, after all, they are the emperors of the ancient remnants, and they are born with divine bones. Even in this era of declining gods, there has only been one supreme deity for thousands of years, which is the current emperor of the Feather tribe. Even their little imperial concubine ascended to immortality at the age of 1800, let alone the tens of thousands of fairy spirits and monsters of the Feather tribe. The strength of the He clan cannot be ignored. For just a few years, this bounty remains at its highest point, unshakable, with blood dripping down its spine and heart-wrenching. It's not that no one has ever had such a thought, it's just that not only is the power of gluttony unfathomable, but this ancestor also always sees the head but not the tail, leaving empty-handed. Just recently, there has been a slight turning point. Someone caught a glimpse of the shadow of gluttony in Siga City. Although it was just a short claw, it was enough to startle many people. But there are also hesitations, after all, Siga City is not a simple place. Inside, there are the best wine in the world, the most beautiful people, as well as gambling houses that can throw a lot of money in music houses that are drunk and dreamy. However, at the same time, there are also demons hidden under the mask of human skin, cultivators who do not know their strength, and even ordinary people with no magical power. The city of Sigu is mixed with fish and dragons, and immortals, demons, and mortals are no different. The barrier from ancient powers always guards the city of Sigu. Whoever steps into the realm of Sigu City is immortal. After entering this realm, Huan Ning felt that his spiritual power could no longer gather, scattered like fireflies, unable to gather. That was also such a night, where demons and people were all partying in restaurants and gambling houses. On the empty streets, only the sound of the wind blowing down leaves. The place where gluttony is seen is a restaurant. The largest restaurant in Sigu City, the 18th floor. The restaurant, however, is not as named as it usually has 18 floors. It only has 9 floors, and ordinary people can reach up to 8 floors at most. Further up, it is the world of immortals and demons. But the 8th floor is also enough, it is a delicacy from all over the world and a unique feature from all over the world. Whether it is the seafood from the East China Sea or the wild game from Qingxiu, there is nothing that cannot be made on the 18th floor. Her last impression of this restaurant was probably that plate of pickled mother centipedes. Mixed with sweet raw marinade juice, wriggling, colorful, densely packed Huan Ning thought this way and felt a bit nauseous again. Half of it is disgusting, and the other half is because I'm a bit hungry. Who would have thought that among the most famous 18 floors in the world, this thing is actually the most famous. Spiritual power is flowing from the soul-binding silk to an unknown place. It itself is like the bloodline drawn out by the immortal race itself. Once it comes into contact with the cultivator or the skin of the immortal, it will eagerly dive in, absorb pure spiritual energy as nutrients, and grow itself. The entire cave was covered with snow.white and crimson threads, while Huan Ning, who was entangled inside, had a pale face and lifeless eyes, as if it were an exquisite puppet woven from these soul threads. Ha! Huh. She gently blew away the soul silk that was blocking her eyes. This place is very secluded, or in other words, someone has made it very secluded. These things cannot kill a true immortal. She will slowly decline and be released when her spiritual power is drained. 
But at that time, even if they could go out, ordinary immortals would probably bleed weakly and die. Huan Ning felt like her body was about to be emptied, and she felt a bit inexplicably relieved. At least she could be released soon. The soul silk was blown back, bit by bit, slowly falling onto her eyes, probing to grow towards the softest place. It actually wants to get into Huan Ning's eyes. Huan Ning quickly blew hard. Over and over again, Huan Ning felt a bit oxygen deficient and her head was buzzing. She simply closed her eyes. Someone. The clear and ethereal voice, spoken in a calm tone, has an indescribable and moving quality. In the darkness, a thin shadow blocked some openings. Huan Ning opened his eyes. The young man was looking down at her, with a pearl emitting a faint light in his palm, facing away from the light and unable to see her appearance clearly. I saw the bright moon hanging high, and the nigh tree was in the season of falling flowers. Fragments flew down, looking like snow floating on the moon. Huan Ning blinked, afraid that the soul silk would fall again, so he had to blow hard. Huan Ning only felt the airflow around him move, and when he opened his eyes again, the soul silk had already been grasped by the young man. He jumped down directly without any influence, and when he fell, he could vaguely hear a slight cracking sound under his feet, as if stepping on a dead branch or broken wood. The pearl's soft light reached, and the soul silk was as fragile as a spider web. With a wave of his hand, it had already brushed away countless pieces. The broken soul silk quickly retreated back into the mountain wall like an injured beast. The smell of blood remained on the bare rock wall, but there was no trace of those evil creatures. As soon as the constraints on her hands and feet were broken, Huan Ning relaxed all over and fell weakly from mid-air. She took a light breath, and the spiritual power frozen in the elixir field remained motionless like a mountain, with only strands of energy drilling out along the meridians. Undoubtedly, it is Siga City, even though it is already on the edge of the city, it is still restricted to death. That's enough. With only this little spiritual power, Huan Ning was able to use the wind around him to support his body, step on the ground with both feet, and fall steadily. The boy's hand stopped there and slowly withdrew. He said, You are the only one I have ever seen alive. Hmm. Huan Ning wore a mask on his face, which was a best dot selling product personally developed by the Lord of Siga City. Whether it was an immortal or a demon, he could conceal his true appearance without spiritual power, and ordinary people could not detect any abnormalities. She was just a bit shy and could only buy the cheapest option, which greatly reduced her effectiveness. At this moment, although puzzled, in the eyes of the young man, it seemed cold and indifferent. Let's go out first. The boy didn't say much anymore. He put the pearl back in his arms, grabbed a rock with both hands, and after a few jumps, the rabbit had already jumped onto the rock wall. Such excellent skills are among the top experts among mortals. Huan Ming calculated the opponent's strength while grasping the vine thrown by the young man. Although she had some spiritual power, it was better not to use it easily. Shit! There were some thorns on the vine, and Huan Ning loosened it as soon as he grasped it. He frowned and looked at the young man. Pain. Behind her neck, on her wrists, and on her arms, there were wounds left by the soul-binding thread, slowly oozing blood. The hem of her skirt and sleeves were soaked in a bright red color, as strong as a spilled dye pool. Smelling the scent, there seemed to be some restlessness on the rock wall, and a slight evil energy seeped out. Huan Ning turned a blind eye and opened his hand, trying to show the boy, it's all thorns. The young man didn't speak. In fact, from his perspective, he couldn't see clearly what was on her palm. He didn't even see her appearance clearly, only feeling that her expression was unusually cold. But when she said it hurt, her voice sounded both aggrieved and helpless, with a soft and lingering ending, as if she herself was such a coquettish person. After a moment of silence, the young man jumped down again, said he had offended her, and then grabbed her waist. I can't easily use ordinary lightness skills to go out this time. It's not that she's heavy, it's just one hand, 
it's really difficult to support a distance of several meters. He hugged her slender waist while gripping the vine. He used both hands and feet, climbing upwards bit by bit, rubbing his elbows against the rough rocks. Although it was difficult, he quickly reached the entrance of the cave. The young man had a tall stature, and Huan Ning could barely touch his chin in his arms. She could only see his slender and distinct jawline, as well as his soft and beautiful lips, Huan Ning leaned over and said softly from a friendly perspective, it looks pretty good, but unfortunately it's too kind hearted. She extended one hand and pushed it hard, the young man suddenly fell backwards from the air, his crow-colored long hair blown away by the wind, and his messy hair covered his face. His pitch-black eyes reflected the delicate young girl who had just been weak and hanging in mid-air. Moonlight fell on the fluttering hem of her skirt, and she held the clear pearl that she had taken out of his arms at an unknown time, holy like a goddess. The goddess's fingers still maintained their original appearance, like blooming orchids in the moonlight, giving off a different kind of beauty. The soul threads that had already shrunk back seemed to sense the helpless situation of the young man, and like a wild beast, they extended their claws again, quickly winding up from the mountain wall, as if a believer had lifted a sacrifice and held up the body that was about to fall. Pierce his bloodline and draw his strength. I don't know if the young man just hurt them. At this moment, his behavior towards Huan Ning is even more brutal than before. There is a cluster of soul threads that pierce directly into his chest. The young man let out a muffled groan. The snow dot white clothes instantly burst out with large blood splatters. Gentle white moonlight redemption of the evil girl, please support everyone, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Immortal Bones and Evil Souls you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Immortal Bones and Evil Souls, You Are Indeed Not an Ordinary Person. The skirt of the goddess bloomed like a flower, but when it landed at the bottom of the cave, it stumbled a bit. The slightly cool fingertips pressed directly against his chest, and Xing Xing pulled out the soul thread that had penetrated into the flesh and blood. Huan Ning used his limited spiritual power to pinch a simple healing technique and threw it into the young man's wound. In a moment, the blood slowly stopped. Later, Huan Ning ignored him and walked to the mountain wall with the clear pearl that could dispel the evil energy. The snow.white soul silk reflected a slight silver luster under the moonlight, slender and white like a spider web. Huan Ning smeared the blood that had not yet dried up on it. The spider web trembled excitedly, and in an instant, it grew thicker. It was eager to drill into Huan Ning's wound, but fortunately, the main power of the soul silk here was on the young man. Huan Ning slapped it back. These evil creatures are specifically used to deal with cultivators who carry the aura of immortality. Legend has it that this creature is made from 40.9 extremely evil creatures, mixed with the soul of immortals. It prefers the pure energy in the cultivator's body, and the more they struggle, the deeper it will penetrate. Of course, cultivators have different levels, including soul-binding silk. Lower-level soul silk can only limit behavior and make cultivators feel weak and scattered. However, such soul silk, which can corrode bones and marrow, and even turn blood into its own, is already of the highest quality and cannot be refined without the strength of an immortal or above. The Qingming Pearl was lifted upwards, and the soft pearl light illuminated the trajectory of the soul silk extension. Upon careful observation, it was discovered that the roots of these 81 soul silk were pointing towards a protruding stone on the southeast stone wall. Gao Gao is embedded in the wall cave, but the surrounding rock cave belongs to the quartz stone, which is about the size of seven or eight fists. There are several depressions on it, deep and lifeless, with a strange shape. If it weren't for the guidance of this young man and the introduction of the King Mingzu, even if he had been suspended for three days, it would be difficult to detect the abnormality of this stone. Huan Ning thought for a moment and bent down to explore the cave for a while, finally finding a useful stick-like object. She poked at the stone, but remained motionless. Huan Ning's remaining spiritual power also stopped the young man's bleeding. This time, she could only use brute force, 
but fortunately, she was born with extraordinary bloodline and still had strength. After being poked for a while, the strange stone finally loosened a bit, but still refused to leave. Huan Ning was overjoyed and increased his strength. With a click, the stone finally fell down and rolled to Huan Ning's feet. Huan Ning bent down and was about to take a look under the pearl light when suddenly a silver light flashed in front of him. As she looked up, a slender sword suddenly appeared. The strange stone fell to the ground, and the soul thread was no longer bound. The young man had already escaped, and the soft sword wrapped around his waist was in his hand, lying horizontally in front of Huan Ning. The blood on the young man's body was not less than that of Huan Ning, and he stood relatively straight. Huan Ning couldn't see his expression clearly, only feeling the coolness of the sword. Huan Ning held his breath slightly. To eliminate demons in the mortal world, one must follow the process of Chaochen sect. In order to prevent the gods from using their magic indiscriminately, Chaochen sect will estimate the strength required for this mission and then issue a passage spell that can limit their strength. This time entering Sigu City, although considering that Sigu City would suppress the spiritual power of the gods, just in case. Especially violent law enforcement officers like Huan Ning, Chao Chen Si only gave Huan Ning less than 30% of his spiritual power. Even so, Huan Ning was still drained of his spiritual power for three days and nights by these soul threads without exhaustion until death. But it's also limited to not dying. If you want to fight this young man, it's probably impossible. Huan Ning pondered for a moment and happily planned to beg for mercy from the other party. She originally had no dignity as a divine race, and compared to her life, these were not worth mentioning, let alone wearing a mask now. Who knew that this spineless thing was the imperial concubine of the Grand Feather Clan? Losing half of one's backbone, Huan Ning couldn't help but sigh in his heart. This thing is strange. The young man's voice was faint, and he flipped the silver sword that was blocking her chest, lifting the stone further away. It was also with this roll that the strange stone turned around, presenting an uneven side, revealing its original appearance. On the dark stone surface floated a twisted skull, and those uneven areas were where the eyes and nose spread countless pale, delicate soul threads from the skull, entwining the cave like snow holes. Perhaps frightened, the soul silk was rushing back and forth, as if millions of reptiles were returning to their nests, reminding Huan Ning of the bowl of Wan Ling soup. The skeleton absorbed all the soul threads, and the exposed white bones on the stone surface faintly revealed a translucent jade texture, eerie yet also revealing a peculiar beauty. Huan Ning has taken the opportunity to sit down on the ground. The skull opened its mouth and sprayed a wisp of turbid air towards Huan Ning. The aura was so turbid and evil that I had already felt the extreme resentment contained in it before I even saw it. If I were infected by the turbid chi, my skin would probably rot and my face would be completely unrecognizable. Break it. The young man sacrificed his blood, pinched the formula with his fingertips, and the King Mingzu broke free from Huan Ning's hand. In an instant, it shattered and turned into powder in front of her, forming a barrier to resist the invasion of Turbid Qi. This is not driven by magic, it is just a curse for controlling objects. Huan Ning restrained the spiritual formula in her hand and inwardly expressed a regret. Although the Qin Ming Pearl was not a rare item, it was worth her salary for half a year. A spiritual light suddenly appeared, illuminating the cave with a bright light that suddenly dimmed. The skull statue was summoned and took the opportunity to fly out at a fast and rapid speed. Flying to the mountain pass, a silver sword suddenly struck and pierced through the hard surface of the rock. With a resounding sound, it pierced through the left eye of the skull and firmly nailed it to the top of the cave. At the same time, the young man didn't look at Huan Ning either. He had already stepped on the rocks on the rock wall and used his mortal martial arts skills to leap to the cave entrance. Although his pace was heavier than just now, he quickly climbed up. Huan Ning could only helplessly grab onto the vine, use a long stick as support, and follow up against the rocks. The mountain breeze slowly blows through the mountains and fields, and the moon is gradually setting in the west, about to dawn. 
This is a cave carved in the foothills of Pingnan Mountain, where dawn falls from the peaks and illuminates the area. Flowing clouds flowed past the mountain, and the nigh tree that grew in the crevices also fluttered with them. Under the misty tree, a young man sat on his knees, with a gentle mountain breeze. Perhaps luck had just affected his wound, and blood had seeped out again. He was applying medicine to himself. Huan Ning's healing technique was already extremely poor, especially during a time when his spiritual power was scarce. The cave, which had been tightly sealed for a long time, was now clear and bright. Huan Ning was finally able to exhale a long breath of turbid air, but he still couldn't adapt to the current light in front of him. I only felt a blurry shadow under the tree with its back facing her, its clothes half faded to my waist, its hair as crow-colored, and its skin as cool as jade. After a moment, the young man had already lifted his clothes, pulled out his scattered hair from his clothes, folded his collar, and walked quickly to Huan Ning's side, handing her a medicine bottle. Since you came up on your own, let's first treat the wound. That medicine is obviously not ordinary, the jade is warm and smooth without any cotton wool, and even contains a faint fairy spirit. And the hand holding the medicine bottle. It was a hand that Huan Ning didn't know how to describe, clearly a man's hand, but every inch was meticulously flawless. But Huan Ning's focus is on that sentence. What does it mean to come up on your own? Huan Ning looked up in confusion. The young man had a delicate face, not to mention how handsome he was, but his low and drooping eyes, with long and dense eyelashes, cast a light shadow in his eyes. The young man's tone was calm, without any hint of yin or yang strangeness. There are many thorny vines, and you are weak. I will go pick you up after I treat your injury. Now that you have come up on your own, it must have caused even more serious injuries. Although this medicine is not a top-notch spiritual medicine, it also has great benefits for wound healing. Huan Ning raised her eyebrows lightly and politely took the medicine, thank you very much. Her injuries were quite numerous, but not deep. They were mostly small and shallow cuts, and she didn't rush to deal with them. She just lowered her head and used her nails to pick out the thorns that had just penetrated her palm. She selects carefully and is also very focused. The boy walked to the cave entrance and stared at the skeleton, which was still struggling. The stone fragments wrapped around it had been shaken and dropped, revealing the form of the skeleton itself. A dark blue color was revealed in the white bones, and the entire skeleton had absorbed enough spiritual energy. It opened its mouth slightly full of sharp teeth, eager to reveal it. Huaning picked up the spike and made a the first mock examination of it. She felt the stick she had just brought. Her physical strength gradually recovered, and she also took advantage of the situation to see where the stick was, a stiff leg bone. Huan Ning choked up for a moment and was about to throw it away when she noticed a slight warmth under her palm. That leg bone has a faint immortal breath. Perhaps it is the end of the day when the sun is clear, and the fairy breath spreads out in strands, turning into light smoke that will follow the wind. Huan Ning quickly wrapped himself in his sleeve, and even his immortal breath did not struggle. He attached himself to the goddess's sleeve pocket. Huan Ning saw the young man still staring at the skeleton, so he walked over. The immortal breath in his sleeve seemed to be perceptible, slowly overflowing. Huan Ning was taken aback and saw the wisp of immortal breath slowly attached to the skeleton, hidden in it. At this moment, the struggling ghost skeleton suddenly quieted down, and the evil energy around it gradually dissipated, eventually transforming into ordinary white bones. Huan Ning and the young man both trembled slightly. Immortal breath recognizes the master, and evil bones accept evil. The owner of this skeleton is actually a fairy. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Hidden Demons in the Pen You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Hidden Demons in the Pen Surprisingly, someone used the immortal family's bones and blood to refine such evil things. The skeleton has been collected by the young man with an oilcloth and pasted with a cinnabar yellow talisman. 
who knows when it will be summoned to fly away again, so it can only be carried with him to prevent chaos. Huan Ning and the young man had already descended the mountain and arrived at the city of Sigu. They looked up at the gate with the golden plaque reading, Sigu City, and continued to lament, I really don't know how many there are in this city. 11. The boy answered her in a calm tone, I climbed five mountains and seventy point two caves, and saw the bones of eleven immortals. You are the twelfth and only one still alive. Huan Ning was prepared in his heart, but he couldn't help but frown. With so many people missing, Chao Chen Si knew nothing she thought of another thing, are you also here for gluttony? The young man turned his head slightly and said, no. After a pause, he slowly said, I came for the Mingyao immortal official. Huan Ming was well aware that the appearance of the shark immortal was among the top in the heavenly palace. There were countless immortals who had fallen under her skirt, and it was normal to have one or two more infatuated seeds. If he continued to ask, he was afraid it would hurt his heart. Huan Ming was parallel to him on the bustling street, no longer mentioning this sad matter. Instead, he made up his mind to follow him. Although the purpose was different, the process was always the same. Where are you going now? Find the origin of this evil creature. Oh. You're going there. Not bad this so dot called place is on the 18th floor. During the day, Sigu City is no different from the mortal world, and those bizarre worlds only open at night. During the day, they are very orderly. It was April, and although spring arrived later this year, it was also the time for Changshuan. However, when I saw the Ji River passing through Sigu City, the water in the river was like jade, and there were lively fish swimming in between. The grass on the shore was long, and birds were flying. There were women and children doing laundry and playing. If it weren't for the sharp fangs and the smile that the child showed when turning his head, and the woman's unintentional claws piercing through a carp while washing clothes, she would have casually placed the carp in the bucket, intending to bring it back for dinner. This scene is truly quiet and peaceful only when the mortal world is at peace. In the eighteenth floor, there were even storytellers and singers, and amidst the chaos, Huan Ning covered his mouth with his sleeves and let out an elegant burp. The delicious food on the table had been swept away, and Huan Ning finally let go of her prejudice against the 18th floor. It turned out that she only didn't know how to order dishes, not that the 18th floor was just a facade. They are still wearing mottled blood clothes, and the barrier power here is too strong to even remove the items from the Qianquan bag. Fortunately, none of them are human, and this situation is not eye-dot catching. The young man in front of her didn't seem to be hungry. He just took a few bites and dropped his chopsticks. When she was full, he called the waiter and ordered a pot of wine. Yu Chen fell into Baijiu. The waiter smiled, How much do you want? Eight, two, eight. The waiter smiled more eerily and said, That's extremely expensive. The young man picked up a translucent spiritual stone with his fingertips and placed it on a tray held up by the waiter. The waiter gradually restrained his smile and changed his expression. He bent down to bow and said, Follow me. Leading to a secluded place, a transparent cover suddenly descended from the open space, enveloping the two of them and making no sound outside. The location gradually declined, passing through a layer and falling to the bottom of the 18th floor. The situation on the first floor was very different from that on the top. The first floor was actually a gambling house, the second floor was also a music house, and it was different even further down. Huan Ning tilted his head and looked around, with a hint of a smile on his face, as if he felt it was an extremely interesting thing. After a moment, he fell to the ground and landed on the negative eighth floor. The cover was made of Dong Hai crystal and slowly opened again, giving Huan Ning a feeling of being served. They seemed like delicious food on the plate, and this 18th floor was a gluttonous diner. The 18th floor really has 18 floors, with 8 floors above and 8 floors below. It's like a fairyland on earth above and as eerie as a purgatory below. The 8th floor of this place is also different from the other floors where people indulge in extravagance and extravagance. 
At the entrance, there is actually a several Zhang Hai shark veil with the words, Book Pavilion, written on it, filled with vivid poetry and prose. Several beautiful maids, dressed in earthly palace dresses, emerged from among them and lifted the shaky veil for them. Please come inside. Inside is a long corridor with curtains behind it, and behind it there is a woman who either lowers her head to paint, caresses her strings and sings softly, or plays chess alone. Until the end, there was only one case, one person, with long beards hanging down his chest, writing wildly. In a moment, a sound sounded, and the strings of silk, bamboo, and wind also fell silent. What do you want to ask? The voice was childlike, completely different from what a middle-aged scholar could produce. Huan Ming couldn't help but wonder, although he was still standing honestly, his eyes were dripping as he looked at him. Compared to Huan Ming's strong curiosity, the young man was obviously more steady. I want to ask. Wait a moment. The scholar waved his hand, and a beautiful maid came over holding a delicate balance. On one side, she placed a piece of paper, but on the other side, it was empty. The end where the paper was placed had already sunk, which made people wonder what the paper was actually made of. How much to put and how much to say. The boy lowered his eyes and looked at Tian Ping. One side took out a spirit stone from his sleeve and placed it in the empty space. The balance tilted slightly, but the curvature was extremely shallow. The boy placed another spirit stone with better quality. The balance still only made a slight movement. The balance is still tilted, and the left end has accumulated spiritual stones, pearls, and jade. The estimated value is worth the debt that Huan Ning owes to the demon slaying department. Huan Ning was curious as to where the person had put the money, as if it were constantly flowing. The scholar chuckled low, and the bamboo pen in his hand also stopped. The child's voice sounded very strange, if you only have one or two, you can level it on top. But if you have ten thousand gold, why are you only willing to take out these? Sigu City, on the eighteenth floor, only seeking the destruction of one's family and not seeking gold, silver, or wealth, is doing the most immoral business in the world. The young man spread out his hands and said indifferently, I am penniless. A sudden gust of wind blew through the corridor, stirring the bundle behind the young man, and the yellow talisman on it was poised to fly. Huan Ming let out a, yeah, sound and quickly looked at the skull seal. He turned his head and looked a bit anxious, bowing his hand to the scholar. Our newly hunted monster is a bit restless. Sir, can you lend me a pen and paper so that I can draw a new seal? Although magic cannot be used in Siga City, cinnabar talismans can still be borrowed and used. Huan Ning casually grabbed a handful of spirit stones on the balance and placed them on the table. These will be used as compensation. Even if we can't do business, we won't lose money, he said there was really no reason to refuse, and the scholar hesitated for a moment. Miss, feel free, he said, casual. Huan Ning smiled and ran her scallion white fingers across the row of pen holders in front of him. There were Xiangfei bamboo, purple jade, and wolf hair on them. She brushed them one by one, but was not satisfied. She turned to look at the scholar's hand and said, I think this one is very good, sir. Shouldn't you mind? Huan Ning's hand was faster than speaking. Before the scholar could finish listening, she had already grabbed the green bamboo pen in his hand with two fingers and suddenly twitched it, the scholar's shoulders shrugged a few times, and his expression became strange. In an instant, it turned into a wisp of smoke and crawled out of his clothes, leaving only the pile of scholar's clothes lying on the ground. At that moment, the string players, the painting and playing chess players, and the beautiful maidservants and beauties all stopped their movements, maintaining a smile on their faces but remaining motionless, resembling puppets. The child's voice is still there, already angry, you let go of me. Huan Ning carefully examined this pen. The body of the brush is green, like bamboo and jade, which is not uncommon, but the tip of the brush is devoid of ink. In the hand of the scholar, 
he can write the splendid chapter and embroidery with flying dragons and phoenixes. The sound came from this pen, and as soon as she entered, she noticed the clues. The scholar clearly did not speak, and his face showed no signs of movement, even mocking him like a puppet. Only when the voice spoke would it stop. If you don't let go of me again, I will make you die very miserably. The pen demon screamed as she pinched the pen holder and made a broken posture, hmm. The pen demon immediately fell silent. It is not allowed to use magic in the city of Sigu, and the puppets made of paper are just a bluff. If they really take action, they have no room to fight back. The boy was also watching her. I saw her pull open the chair and sit directly on it with a big grin. Tell me, who made you play such a prank on me? The pen demon snorted, this is the first time I've seen you, why would I tease you? Huan Ning chuckled lightly and said, take a closer look. This is our first time meeting. The girl's eyes were bright, and a slight cold light passed by. She slowly said, three days ago, we just met. The pen demon hesitated for a moment, but suddenly a spiritual light flashed and he said in a sharp voice, you. You're still alive. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Silent River Demon You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Silent River Demon Everyone believes that Sigu City is an absolutely neutral existence, and the 18th floor, as the sign of Sigu City, is naturally neutral. Below the restaurant, there is a nine-story building that can buy and sell everything. One floor sells gambling, one floor sells laughter, and one floor sells monsters. Going down from one floor to the next, the eight floors are talked about by people. They only sell intelligence, and as for the nine floors, they are said to sell their lives. Eight layers have the best intelligence network in the world, the most reliable information, and the most rigorous communication. People who come to Sigu City to search for things cannot be unaware of the 18 floors, 8th floor, book pavilion. Huan Ning also came here at the first time, after all, the clues of gluttony were spread out from here, but there were no weights or scales at that time. Huan Ning exchanged a phoenix tail feather for intelligence. Tao Tai disappeared from Ping Nan Mountain and gave her a demon pointing lamp. That tail feather, shining brightly, is the rarest few on the phoenix's body. It only falls when it reaches adulthood and reaches nirvana, from heaven to earth. Only the tail feathers on the bodies of those in the Nine Micro Palace are qualified to be called divine objects. Huan Ningxi had no doubt about the value of that tail feather, nor did she doubt the neutrality of the 18th floor, although she questioned the statement made by the cabinet owner that Wan Ling soup is the best food on the 18th floor. After the demon lamp left the city, it kept pointing towards an unknown cave. At first, Huan Ning also faintly sensed the immortal energy inside, although he timely sealed off some of the spiritual energy and put on a mask before jumping down, but who would have thought that such a place would have such a high-grade soul-binding silk? After all, gluttony is not something with a brain. Huan Ning played with his pen and said, Do you remember? You're just a bluff pen demon, how dare you sit in the book pavilion? The pen demon rustled, intelligence from all over the world is exchanged through letters. As the leader of 10,000 pens, I am naturally qualified to sit in the book pavilion. Besides, besides, who would offend a scholar like you? Huan Ning's mouth curved slightly upwards and he said, Oh. Then I'll ask you again, who instructed you to lure the immortal official to that southern mountain? The pen demon was furious and said, What temptation? You can question my strength, but you cannot question my business ability. It's okay. Huan Ning let out a sigh, gently pinched the ends of the pen, and with a slight force, the pen demon immediately howled uncontrollably. Wait a minute. The boy who had been silent for a long time suddenly spoke up. Huan Ning raised his eyelid slightly and said, What's up? The young man said, It's not like lying. In addition to the excruciating pain of the pen demon, he also eagerly begged for mercy, foam. Huan Ning glanced at it and immediately changed his voice, becoming softer and more tender. 
Good sister, I'm not teasing you, it's just that the gluttony has indeed disappeared there. It's just that the immortals and demons who have been there recently have not survived. If the heavenly palace knows about it, it will definitely involve me on the 18th floor. I'm only doing this to stop you, not to make things difficult. Huan Ning nodded and understood, I see. The pen demon just felt a sigh of relief, and after a moment, a sharp pain struck. It let out an, ah, sound, and the entire pen had already broken into several pieces, unable to say anything more. Huan Ning let go of his hand and let the pen scatter all over the ground. He smiled lightly and said, I haven't found any gluttony. What's the use of keeping you? She stood up, grabbed the spirit stone and returned it to the boy. Let's go, she said the young man's eyebrows slightly furrowed, and he did not touch the spirit stones. Although there was no fluctuation on his face, it still made Huan Ning smell a subtle dissatisfaction. You killed it, how do we get out? The book pavilion is on the eighth floor, with a beast tamer on top and a life-slaying ghost on the bottom. There is no mechanism on the eighteenth floor, so the two of them have to break through. Just as I finished speaking, hundreds of pens on the desk shook in unison, as if vying for something. Either purple light burst out, or red light shrouded, even the huge desk and the whole room trembled. After a stick of incense, a purple jade pen leaped out, licked the ink that had not dried up, and painted in the place where the scholar disappeared from the sky. Unexpectedly, a scholar was born and painted exactly like him. The scholar still had long beards hanging down his chest, lowered his head to hold the purple jade pen, and began writing articles on his own. The maidservants also came to life, playing the piano and painting, as fresh as ever. A line of maidservants walked over and led them out with a smile, as if nothing had happened. Huan Ning, who had already left the 18th floor, stood by the Ji River, looking at the young man and raising his eyebrows slightly. The boy glanced at her and said, How did you know this? Huan Ning tilted his head and said, I don't know. She paused, I just don't think the Grand 18th floor would allow such a weak little demon and a group of puppets to guard the book pavilion. The young man waved and a blue boat slowly rowed over the lonely river. You're gambling, he said Huan Ning jumped up and said, Of course, because I'm not afraid of losing. The boy glanced at her on the shore. Huan Ning's gaze was as clear as the moon, and she didn't think there was anything wrong with killing an insignificant demon. The young man's eyes were filled with still water, whether he was happy or angry, but he didn't look as comfortable as Huan Ning. They can be considered to be of the same path, one seeking gluttony and the other seeking enlightenment. The boy eventually got on the small boat. The rower was a girl in red, with a beautiful face and long black hair. Seeing the two of them talking as if they were arguing, she smiled sweetly and said, Where are you going? City Lord's Mansion. Huan Ning almost spoke in unison with him. A major incident occurred in Siga City, resulting in the death of eleven immortal officials. However, the book pavilion obstructed the visitors in every way to conceal the truth, and the Demon Slaying Bureau did not send anyone to investigate. The Lord of Sigu City was naturally implicated, and at the very least, it was a crime of hiding and not reporting. I actually thought of going together this time. The girl in red covered her lips and said, The two immortals are sitting still. There is still some distance between the Lord's mansion. The young man responded lightly, closed his eyes, adjusted his breath, and stopped speaking. Huan Ning Wu sat at the bow of the boat, her skirt swaying in the wind, rising and falling like a blooming lotus in the river. The small boat separated from the clear water and crossed both sides of the riverbank. Willow branches brushed past, stirring up the delicate reflection of the goddess in the pool. She suddenly remembered the Jiangnan region of the human world, which should also be the time of April when everything was blooming. The small boat suddenly trembled. The young man opened his eyes and the woman on the boat looked calm. She stopped the boat and said, I'm afraid the water grass might have caught me. I'll go down and take a look. I saw the red-clothed person jump up and down into the silent river, 
only causing shallow splashes of water to disappear in the blink of an eye. The ship stopped on the surface of the quiet river, and now it has left the community, heading towards a desolate place, drifting alone. The girl disappeared for a long time, but the boat swayed more and more violently. Huan Ning also noticed something was wrong and bent down to look. Countless water plants had just emerged from the still clear bottom of the quiet river, dancing like the girl's long hair in pitch black, wildly growing against the boat. It's another trap. These four Gu cities cannot use magic, but there are also many strange and demonic spells. The water grass does not feel any spiritual power or demonic energy, but it grows like crazy. The two of them exchanged a glance, knowing that if the algae were to grow through the bottom of the ship, the next step would be to involve them in the water and indulge in reckless behavior. Huan Ning remained silent, unsure of what it would be like for her poor phoenix to fall into the river. So she turned her head and looked at the boy sincerely, I don't know how to water. As soon as the words fell, the hull of the ship was torn apart, and Huan Ning fell into the water. The Ji River is not wide, but its water is the key to maintaining the barrier. The suppression curse contained in it prevents Huan Ning from releasing any spiritual power. She instinctively wanted to open her mouth and inhale, but the algae came over and grabbed her slender neck. Some even poked into her mouth, turning into a foul air. Huan Ning only felt a wisp of fishy smell flowing through his abdomen, and his eyes suddenly became blurred. His limbs also burned, and his body fell uncontrollably to the bottom of the river. She vaguely thought that the water was so dirty, so she instinctively held her breath and stepped on the bottom of the river with her feet. At the moment of touching the dirty sludge, a hidden ray of clear and bright energy from divine consciousness flooded into the meridians, and the body also relaxed accordingly. Seeing her motionless for a long time, the water grass wrapped around her neck also loosened and turned into a woman's hand, sticky and boneless, gently caressing Huan Ning's face. The lower body of the boatman was still covered in pitch black and tangled seaweed, but her upper body had transformed into a young girl and stopped beside her, looking at her with some fascination. What a sweet and fragrant taste, she said she pressed against Huan Ning's neck, opened her mouth slightly, and inside were two rows of fine and sharp fish teeth. The subtle pain stimulated Huan Ning to open her eyes, her gaze showing an unprecedented calmness. However, after soaking for a long time, the bottom of her eyes turned slightly red, making her appear somewhat eerie. She raised her hand and caressed the witch's head, gently saying, Is my blood delicious? The female demon only felt a blazing aura fall down her throat, burning her stomach and intestines into bloodshed for a moment. She couldn't help but widen her eyes and let out a strange moan in her throat. Herculent. Huan Ming smiled innocently and said, Why don't you drink more? As he spoke, he smeared his own blood onto the face of the female demon. The blood did not melt into the water, but instead adhered tightly to the female demon's face. In an instant, the beautiful face of the female demon had become indistinguishable from her facial features, and her nose bone was visibly exposed. Huan Ning watched the female demon quietly, rolling silently in the water in extreme pain, burning her internal organs like a burning fire. However, her esophagus and vocal cords had been burned and she couldn't make any sound. She could only open her mouth and struggle to death. The water suddenly moved around, and Huan Ning looked coldly. Across the quiet river, a snowy coat scattered in the water, and the boy slowly approached her from a distance. Huan Ning pondered for a moment, reached out and grabbed the female demon's throat. With a slight force, her pain was immediately over. She closed her eyes again, and the clear light faded away, slowly falling back to the bottom of the river. When I woke up again, it was already dusk approaching. The evening breeze blew in from the window of the inn, perhaps a bit cold. Huan Ning suddenly moved and slowly opened his eyes. Huan Ning looked out the window, it was already late, and there were only a few hurried pedestrians on the desolate streets. The dark blue night was eroding the city, and the lights were shining from the east until it was full of light. The young man has disappeared, along with the package that sealed the demon bone. 
someone knocked on the door. Huan Ning opened the door and saw a blindfolded young man with a pale complexion. He leaned on a blind cane and politely bowed, someone asked me to bring you a message. This person's breath belongs to ordinary people, and there is no trace of pure or turbid energy. Huan Ming let go and said, what words? A young master said that he has an important matter to deal with. If the girl wants to continue investigating, she will meet here in seven days. Huan Ming thought to himself, what day is it today? The young man replied to her, on the seventh day of April. A wisp of smoke suddenly bloomed in the sky above Siga City, swirling and flying into the clouds, finally transforming into a faint long feather shape, with its tail as brilliant as brocade and as brilliant as fire. Huan Ning watched as the smoke dissipated and murmured, that's a coincidence. I also have something important to do. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Empress Dowager Will Marry you are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Empress Dowager Will Marry Jiuwei Mountain, Qingyang Palace Candlelight streamed across the hall, adorning the dowry. Hairpins of gold, silver, and jade beads lay quietly inside. The intricately intertwined tassels sank down, reflecting a dazzling light. The owner of the palace did not pay attention to these beautiful decorations, she was focused on eating tea. The exquisite plum blossom box, painted with gold and silver, is divided into four small compartments by thin jade pieces. In each compartment, there are two tea snacks made into patterns, either plum blossoms or lotus flowers. Just by looking at them, one can feel the fragrance is irresistible and exquisite. She eats quickly, but she is not rude either. On the contrary, she thinks she is elegant and lovely, with slightly bulging cheeks and a unique kind of coquettishness. At least in the eyes of the priest Chi Qin, it is cute. And at least it's much cuter than when I just picked it up. When she was found, her whole body was wet and disheveled, as if she had just been pulled out of the water, covered in mottled blood. She walked over and sat back in the Fenghuan carriage without saying a word. Chi Qin was almost scared to death, until the fairy maid who helped her bathe said that those were only minor wounds and not a problem, and finally let go. He didn't want to ask Empress Dowager if she had been good after leaving the palace for three years, or where she went on an adventure. She was always so stubborn, and even when asked, she would only blink her eyes and say, Chi Qing, you have two more white hair. He looked at Empress Dowager lovingly, occasionally making tea for her and said, slow down, why are you so restless after getting married? As soon as they spoke, both of them were stunned for a moment. Emperor Ji's hand, which was grabbing the teacup, also stopped for a moment. Seeing that she was unhappy, Chi Qing felt a little regretful and said, I didn't mean that. Emperor Ji slowly grasped the teacup, lowered her head, took a sip, swallowed all the tea, and looked up with a smiling expression. I know, Huan Ning is going to move out and live, she said upon hearing this, Qi Qing stood up urgently and said, the emperor is just angry. You are his sister. If he were really so ruthless, he wouldn't have sent so many people to find you. Go find me. Huan Ning snorted, if I don't show up tomorrow, can he still go up for me on behalf of the wedding between the West Wilderness and the Heavenly Palace? Qi Qing choked up and exclaimed, actually, we have been searching for you for many days. She blinked and said, I'm afraid I'm afraid I'll run away from marriage, right? She is the imperial concubine of the Fong tribe. No matter what his psychology was at the time when he gave her as a gift, she could not have eaten the offerings of Jiuwei Mountain for so many years. She stood up and stretched lazily, her long hair flowing like a waterfall under the slightly yellow light. I've been severing ties with him for three years, and now we're just talking about some romantic relationship. I'm tired, she said Chi Qing knew she was a bit angry and found a reason to drive him away. She had no choice but to hastily say, the emperor never thought of driving you out of Qingyang Palace, and then left. Huan Ming walked up to the hangar and looked at the red dark flower phoenix patterned chiffon wedding dress. The skirt, embroidered with intricate totems, was laid flat like clouds and clouds. 
It is exquisite and cumbersome, even a button is a top-notch sea pearl, one of which is enough to match her annual salary. Halfway through, Xiaodi Ji suddenly let out a sigh, with a tone of helplessness and melancholy. She let go of her hand and let the gorgeous dress slip to the ground. Don't like it. This is one of the gifts sent by the shark tribe. A soft and slightly smiling voice sounded, with a deep tone, but the ending was gently raised, scratching the tip of the heart like a feather. Huan Ning didn't look back. Don't step on my window. If it breaks, I'll have to repair it for Huan Yuan. Okay. Fu Yun reluctantly flipped in through the window. He was already familiar with this matter, and even knew the interior decoration of Little Empress. He picked up a piece of Yuning plum ice cream and threw it into his mouth, frowning as he chewed on it. You still like something so sweet and greasy, he said, if you don't like it, you can spit it out, Huan Ning looked back. You can also get out. It's not cute anymore. Fu Yun chuckled, what are you upset about? Am I annoyed? Emperor Ji smiled lightly, gentle and sweet. But doesn't it feel abrupt for the son of the heavenly lord to jump into my soon-to-be-married woman's chamber late at night? I thought what annoyed you was. Fu Yun pondered for a moment, his lips curled up, isn't it marrying me? Emperor Ji sneered and did not answer. Fu Yun Shenjun took a step forward. He seemed handsome and elegant, but it was only when he truly stood up that people felt a bit oppressed. He bent down and gently pinched Emperor Ji's chin, his frivolous expression gradually narrowing in his eyes. If you're not blaming me, then you're blaming Huan Yuan, or that little shark demon. Empress Dowager brushed aside his hand and still smiled brightly, why complain? I heard that Lord Changling is the beloved of all the women in the Western Wilderness, with an extremely beautiful appearance. The Western Wilderness has always been rich, so why am I dissatisfied? Fu Yun shook his head and said, It's not that the shark demon is bad. It's just Huan Ning. In your eyes, he's just one of the evidences that you let people manipulate you. Young master, you have thought too much. She still had a smiling expression making Fu Yun feel as if he had punched cotton. Fu Yun let go of her and returned to the edge of the tea table. She bent down to pick up the heavy wedding dress, hung it back, and slowly stroked the pearl on it, murmuring, I've been poor for the past three years. Seeing this dress, I really want to exchange it with Bai Lu's hen. Huan Ning. He called out. Huan Ning was deaf and unheard of. So he whispered, I can help you kill Sang Yen. Emperor Ji paused and said, Who is Sang Yen? Oh, is that shark? Little Empress Ji turned around and looked at him with a calm and eerie gaze. And then what? Will the Western Wilderness send another shark? Are you going to kill him again until all the Western Wilderness royal family is gone? She smiled and said, Fu Yun, when have you been so naive? The flowers and trees outside the semi-open window were sparse, and the moonlight was scattered by the wind. He turned his eyes to look at the trembling branches, and a slight curve formed at the corner of his mouth. Sometimes, innocence is not bad at all, he said he finished drinking the already cold cup of tea, put down the cup, no longer glanced at Little Empress, turned around and walked out. There is a Qin Kei pond in the Chaochen division of Sanchen division, where thousands of lamps float year dot round. By the pond, there is a huge ancient tree hanging with bright red lantern fruits and glass lamps. In every heart lamp, there is the wish of the most virtuous person. As he passed by in the silver phoenix chariot, the fairies of the bird pond all bowed and bowed, and in the wind, only the sound of the jade tracks crushing the nebula could be heard. He unintentionally looked up, only a little fairy in a white dress looked up and picked a mortal heart lamp from an ancient tree. The little fairy seemed to feel something and looked back with a light smile. The mist gradually thickened, and the little immortal disappeared into it. The sticky mist seemed to have formed a solid substance, surging up and entangled him, unable to break free. Emperor, Emperor! He woke up at the call of the chief priest Chi Qing, feeling a splitting headache. 
he propped up his body with his forehead and realized that it was already dawn. Today is particularly noisy. Chi Qing saw him silent and thought the wound was still hurting. He quickly asked, Do you want to call a medical officer to take a look? Huan Yuan waved his hand and spoke coldly, No need. In another hour, the guests will arrive. Chi Qing cautiously said, Your Highness is still sleeping. Do you want to wake her up? Huan Yuan glanced at him and his aura decreased slightly. Do you also need to report this kind of thing to me? Chi Qing felt that she was also feeling wronged. Neither one nor two of them were sleeping excessively. Today, except for third Prince Huaning, who was not awake from his big dreams, while Huaning himself was playful and tight, how could he care about his wedding? There's not even one person in charge right now. I'm not satisfied with this marriage, should I have done enough superficial work? Huan Yuan closed his eyes and naturally understood Qi Qing's meaning. After a moment of silence, he said, I'll go see her later. Qi Qing was overjoyed and quickly retreated, yes. Huan Ning is not lazy, she just feels that there is no need to wake up so early. This marriage is a compensation from the heavenly palace to the western wilderness. However, the laws of the heavenly realm are strict, and ascending is the first way to enter the immortal realm in history. The immortal officials of the Sanchin division thought about it and only then remembered a special case. Once upon a time, there was a venerable deity who fell in love with a mortal woman and wanted to turn her into an immortal. However, the woman had no immortal fate and had been cultivated for a hundred years. She was still immortal, and seeing that she was about to age, the venerable deity wanted to force her to become an immortal and enjoy eternal life. The heavenly realm is stopped by heavenly rules. When the Divine One is angry, countless deaths and injuries occur, and he even desires to break through the realm and become demonic. So I made this opening. From then on, besides ascending, only by marrying can one become an immortal. This also requires that the immortals in the heavenly palace must be above the level of an immortal and have a noble identity, otherwise there is no such exception. The western wilderness is the closest place to the underworld among the eight wildernesses. Although it is rich in minerals, it lacks spiritual power. After being demoted to the western wilderness, the shark tribe only had a chance to become an immortal for three thousand years. The last time she was naturalized, her name was Mingyao. However, in just one hundred years, the princess of the shark clan has fallen and her bones are nowhere to be found. In order to appease the western wilderness, who was rich and had always submitted to the heavenly palace, we couldn't help but take care of their emotions, so we gave them another chance to naturalize. Except for Faishan, traditionally only through marriage can one become an immortal. This also requires that the immortals in the heavenly palace must be above the level of an immortal and have a noble status, otherwise there is no such exception. The young daughter of Shark June is only a thousand years old, and at this age, she is only eight years old in the mortal world. Therefore, this matter fell on Huan Ning's head. She was just a passing act. In this heavenly realm, the immortals have nothing to do. Apart from practicing and accumulating merits, prolonging life, they spend more time in love. However, the immortals have an extremely long lifespan, and those who have been talking for hundreds of years are mostly tired and want to break up, causing a lot of trouble. But forming an immortal couple is different. This is a matter of ascending to the throne and reporting to the heavenly way. Once a vow is made, all three realms know it. All the immortal officials knew that she was in a bad mood and didn't want to touch this mold. They just waited dryly until the guests had already stepped through the threshold, and little Empress Ji was still sleeping. Chi Qin couldn't help but catch a glimpse of a bustling figure walking at the end of the corridor. He then restrained himself and bowed, Third Highness. The person who came was Huan Ing, the third prince of Jiu Wei Mountain. Although she was not very old, she wore an embroidered long dress and an eight-treasured gilded gold hairpin. Her face was bright and beautiful, but her momentum was quite impressive. Haven't you gotten up yet? Is this to disregard the dignity of Jiu Wei Mountain for me? 
Huaning was not used to her useless sister. She immediately ordered someone to break through the door, but as soon as she touched it, the door opened by herself. Inside stood Huan Ning, who had already woken up and yawned. With a light lift of her eyelashes, she swept over Huan Ying's face and smiled, Good morning, Aying. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Intentional Tolerance You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Intentional Tolerance in the Divine Race There are often couples whose original bodies are not of the same species, and their children are born with daughters following wives and sons following fathers. Although Huaning grew up on Jiuwei Mountain from a young age and was respectfully called Third Prince, she was not a phoenix, but a crane. Her mother is the crane fairy in front of the Taishian Immortal Throne, also known as a charming and unparalleled beauty. After giving birth to Huaning, the crane fairy fled into an empty door and never appeared again, but these did not hinder Huan Ying's noble identity. She has always been regarded as the only princess of Jiuwei Mountain, a noble feather princess. Until the winter of that year, the first snow fell on Jiuwei Mountain, the grass and trees withered, and all things frosted. Qi Qing led a very young girl and walked up the snow step step by step. Her eyebrows and eyes were covered in faint snow, and there was no light in her eyes. She stood alone, even though Qi Qing tried to hold her hand, she was coldly unwilling to respond. Qi Qing said that in the future, this will be the second prince of Jiuwei Wei Mountain, the concubine of Emperor Huaning. He paused for a moment, but with some pride, he said that His Highness Huaning is the most prestigious phoenix of the Feather Clan. In addition to their father, there was actually a red-tailed female phoenix in the world, and they combined to give birth to Huan Ning. Because she was born slightly earlier than Huan Ning, she was the imperial concubine of Jiu Wei Mountain. The title of Emperor Ji is only worthy of Huan Ning, the unique red-tailed phoenix in the world. Even if Huaning was born and raised in Qingyang Palace, she also received the title of princess. Qi Qing has been living in Jiuwei Mountain for nearly 8,000 years. Since childhood, he has watched Huaning grow up. Huaning has always been a bit pampered, but he has always respected Qi Qing. Ke Huaning had never heard Qi Qing praise her in such a tone before, full of pride. Huaning stood in the corridor, looking at the girl covered in snow and ragged, with a subtle emotion breeding in her heart. This emotion gradually grew stronger over the long years. However, this older sister heard that there was a problem during hatching, and it took her 500 years to hatch before she finally hatched, so she has always been younger than she appears. Huaning always believed that since he had broken her shell earlier than her, he should not call her sister, but Qi Qing and the other gods did not think so. At first, Jiu Wei was quiet and reserved, and even if she tried to bully her, she wouldn't retaliate. Later on, she became more cheerful and charming, but she never cared about how Huaning called her. She just smiled and called her Aing. Huaning hates her light and indifferent appearance extremely much. She seems to have everything at her fingertips, but it makes her look ridiculous. Especially at the age of 1800, when she had achieved complete merit and ascended to immortality, she was so calm and composed, as if she never worried about falling. Huaning can also be considered a talented person in the heavenly clan today. She is still a celestial being to this day, but she is far behind Huan Ning. The only thing that made Huaning feel that Huan Ning was just such a thing, there were only two things. One is that when she was 2000 years old, she was only able to produce one feather. The upper limit of the feather clan relies entirely on this heart feather. One feather is mediocre, while three feathers are rare to see in 10,000 years. Huan Ning's ability to ascend to immortality in this life is already her limit, the second thing is to form an immortal couple with Shi Huang today. At the beginning, when the heavenly palace was determined to make up for the western wilderness, it selected people among several noble divine clans, and although there were not few in the heavenly palace who could ascend to the position of immortals, there were not many. Most of the goddesses who were able to rank among the top immortals were around seven or eight thousand years old, and there were also those who were younger, around three or four thousand years old. 
However, due to their young achievements, it is inevitable that they were young and reckless. Therefore, when it comes to these goddesses, their private lives are somewhat unregulated. But I heard that the western wilderness shark king, at the age of 2500, was young and devoted to the way. He had practiced hard in the human world for hundreds of years with profound merits and was known for his reputation. It is said that he did not even have concubines or maids to serve. Moreover, the shark king has a beautiful appearance. If he had not been born in the western wilderness, he would have been the most favored divine king among the fairies in the heavenly palace. In order to prevent the coldness of the western wilderness and considering that she must be a single fairy, there are only three candidates to choose from. Xie Fuchi, the deputy head of the Chaochin department, Fu Wei, the second daughter of the heavenly lord, and Huan Ning from Jiuwei Mountain. Xie Fuchi is beyond imagination. She ascended from mortal enlightenment and is a top-dot-notch killing god in the world. Not to mention her evil aura, and not to mention whether her background is noble, she herself is not from the heavenly palace and has no position to sacrifice any for this marriage. The remaining ones are Xiaojun Fuwei and Emperor Ji Huaning, both of whom are renowned outside. They are both top-dot-notch geniuses of the new generation, and have the reputation of being the twin daughters of the heavenly realm in terms of appearance. Regardless of which one is chosen, it is a beloved existence for millions of divine beings. In the end, the heavenly lord had a thick face and issued three heavenly edicts in a row. Huan Yuan accepted this edict, which saved the heavenly lord but also caused harm to Huan Ning. Huan Ning still remembers Qi Qing pleading hard that day, saying nothing but to wait for the Shark King to ascend. At that time, he went to the Moon Elder Hall to inform the Three Realms, and breaking the engagement would save both sides' face. However, Huan Ning remained unwilling and threatened to sever ties with Huan Yuan. Afterwards, he left Qingyang Palace and lived alone in Qianhua Valley for three years. Those three years were really the most enjoyable time for Huan Ning. But now Huan Ning has compromised. Once he gets married, he will inevitably stay in Qingyang Palace for a long time. Huan Ying's heart was gloomy, and he saw those immortal attendants enter the palace one after another, grooming Huan Ning. The items held by the immortal attendants are all spiritual treasures that are hard to find in the eight wildernesses. They have everything from jade, frost, and jade to fragrant blue powder. Huan Ning stood there, only smelling a refreshing fragrance, and his gaze searched around before finally falling on the maid at the end. She is holding a jar of fairy fragrance dew. This item is the best spiritual product for the goddesses to nourish and beautify their skin. It requires the condensed fragrant flower personally nurtured by the lord of Xianyun Island, a drop of dew on the morning flower bud, various steaming and brewing methods, and countless exotic flowers and herbs to obtain this rare and precious one. Now she is holding a whole jar, and it seems that others are only willing to use two or three drops for skin care. Surprisingly, she wants to use this jar to wash her face. This is naturally one of the betrothal gifts sent by Shi Huang, which can be considered a burden. However, the gift from Shi Huang filled the entire warehouse of Qingyang Palace. At first, Huaning only laughed at whether Huan Ning wanted to marry a demon, or whether he could only stick to it himself. He didn't expect the western wilderness to be so wealthy. She felt a knot in her heart, as this fairy fragrance dew had only been obtained in a small bottle despite countless hardships, which was already enviable, while Huan Ning could use it to wash her face. His Highness Huan Ning stood in front of her, staring closely at her. The maid dared not go any further and had to grit her head and say, Third Highness. Go inside. Fortunately, His Royal Highness did not find it difficult. He turned his body and the maid breathed a sigh of relief. She lowered her head and walked forward, but unexpectedly, something seemed to be chained between her feet, causing her to lose balance and fall out. The celadone shattered, and the immortal fragrance poured onto the ground in an instant, filling the room with an indescribable fragrance. The maid cowed out in shock, her delicate face instantly turning pale. 
she naturally knew what it was, even if it meant breaking her to pieces, it wouldn't be worth it. Your Highness. Spare your life. Starting from today, I will be on duty every day, end of this chapter. Chapter 8. Guests Coming From Afar. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8. Guests Coming From Afar Even If There Are People. It's already too late to say anything now, and we can only humbly beg for mercy. Upon hearing the commotion, Chi Ching couldn't help but frown at the scene and say, Old age, you can forget to listen to some gossip all day long. Your work is relatively neat, why are you so reckless today? In his later years, he only cowed out and said with a mournful expression, God spare your life. It's really. It's. Huaning said, I'm just happy for Huan Ning. In his later years, he quickly glanced at His Highness San and saw that she was staring at him with sharp eyebrows and eyes, and suddenly stopped speaking. Chi Ching sighed and said, It's okay, go to the Sea Mansion to receive the punishment. In her later years, tears welled up in her eyes, and the court punished her severely. The value of this jar of immortal dew was likely to send her to the wilderness, and she would never return thereafter. But what could she do? She had to bow her head and say, yes. Just as he was about to leave, he heard a clear and soft voice, as if it were a heavenly melody. It's just a jar of dew, Chi Ching. You're too strict. Just look up. She looked up at the words and saw the young girl in front of the dowry, looking back in the golden light. She was dressed in solemn red clothes, with a pearl crown on her head, beautiful and indescribable. With a gentle smile, he said, it doesn't look so clumsy either. Just stay by my side and take good care of it, and resist that kind of slutty do. I couldn't believe it in my late age, and after a while, I heard Chi Ching's divine official say, thank you, your highness. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, your highness. Joy comes from sorrow, and a huge sense of joy hits my face. In my later years, I quickly got up and felt helpless, wanting to come forward and help. But when Third Prince Huaning sneered softly, you're pretending. Subsequently, His Highness San swept away with a brush of his sleeve. Chi Ching sighed as he went out to greet the guest, you know she has such a temperament. If you go to the mansion, I will help that little slave. In the mirror, Huan Ning was carefully applying lip gloss, like the most dazzling color on a beauty's painting. He only raised his lips and smiled brightly, of course, it's because my heart is soft. It's not intentional to see her feel uncomfortable. Ning Ning. Suddenly, a person rushed in from outside, and the maid was startled, causing her lips to tilt slightly. Huan Ning said lightly, I advise you not to come and disgust me. The woman behind her covered her lips and smiled lightly, Ning Ning's words really hurt people's hearts. As a princess in the heavenly realm, how could I do such a disgusting thing? Oh. Then why don't you marry that shark king yourself? Instead, let your father force me to Jiawei Mountain. Huan Ning's tone was steady, he waved his hand and held back, lifting his eyelids to look at the young girl sitting upright on the collapsed floor. The girl wore a simple startled magpie bun, with only two cloud-footed pearl tendrils adorned on her hair. She wore a golden pleated long skirt with hundreds of closed eye candle dragon cloud patterns embroidered on it. Her arms were curved with feather gauze and smoke, and her waist was adorned with jade geese and lotus belt rings. Not complicated in terms of clothing, but with a touch of nobility and splendor, her face was very charming and naive. Huan Ning lightly brushed the tassels on her bun, listening only to the broken pearls and Ling Ding. You always know that I detest demons the most. Ning Ning, you know I don't care about these things, Fu Wei said softly as he fiddled with the hem of his skirt this matter is really beyond our control. How could the heavenly clan allow their own princess to form an immortal couple with the demon lord, would it not bring shame to the dragon heavenly clan for eternity? Even if that demon lord ascends to immortality in the future, he will only be a mere earthly immortal. How can he match the identity of Fu Wei? Don't be angry with me, 
Fu Wei ran over with small steps, trying to please Huan Ning by pinching his shoulder. It's just a little shark. If you don't like it, I'll give you some satisfactory ones another day. Huan Ning choked up and didn't know how to understand the brain circuit of the dragon princess for a moment. Fu Wei Hui was mistaken and suddenly said, he is now an immortal and demonic body, so he naturally doesn't deserve you. Well, after marriage, you can send him to the Chonghua Hall, and I will ask my master to help him overcome the calamity and ascend. When he becomes an immortal, he naturally deserves my Ning Ning. No. Huan Ning was still waiting to defend himself, and Fu Wei appeared to have a clear understanding. Don't worry. Even if master doesn't teach him, I will help him. That settled, he said the strong spiritual power of the heavenly realm cannot be compared with that of the western wilderness. If the shark king ascends as soon as possible, he will unlock the status of an immortal couple and not make people question him too much. Huan Ning acquiesced. A black robe brushed past the window of Changing Hall, and a tall and cold figure stopped there. Huan Ning calmed down and said, Brother. The person outside the window responded with a moderate response, and their figure was about to enter through the main door when it suddenly stopped there. A priest hurried over from the end of the corridor, ignoring everything else, and shouted, Emperor. What's causing panic? The divine officer whispered, his expression extremely anxious, and said a few words. The emperor's figure suddenly became fierce, and he turned around and walked away. After taking two steps, he looked back. His voice was already soft and restrained, but still cold and hard. If there is anything that needs to be dealt with by the three departments, I wonder if they can return tonight. Huan Ming is no longer a three-year-old child. He knows the importance and importance of things and won't mess around. Huan Yuan nodded before turning his head and strode away. Fu Wei tilted his head to look at his back, his eyes bright, and said, at times like this, Emperor Qingyang doesn't forget to deal with important matters. Huan Ning said, can't my marriage be considered a legitimate matter? Fu Wei turned to look at her and said, are you unhappy? But the emperor has always placed great importance on the people. He is so urgent, and it must be extremely important. Huan Ning knew that her close friend was a loyal supporter of her elder brother, so she silently rolled her eyes. I don't know what big deal it is either. The emperor is a general of the feather department and also the head of the three dust departments. The dust and fate department, demon slaying department, and chouchen department are all in charge of everything in an orderly manner. I don't know which department has a problem. Huan Ning listened to the little princess's fragmented thoughts and suddenly remembered Ping Nan Mountain. That day, she only focused on searching for the misfortune on the 18th floor, but forgot to go and see if there were really eleven immortal tribes dead there. If these eleven immortals were searching for gluttony like her, it would be reasonable for Chao Chen Si to only receive the news now. However, where did the refined bones in the cave come from? The appearance of the rampant evil energy seems to be not something that can be achieved overnight. She felt uneasy in her heart and was about to stand up when she was pushed down by Fu Wei. Where are you going? Go and see who everyone is now. Fu Wei became interested and said, Okay, okay, let's go together. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Mrs. Bai Shi You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Mrs. Bai Shi The immortal attendants of Qingyang Palace wake up very early and have been busy since the hour of Mao. When the guests arrived, the red carpet woven with gold thread had already been spread all the way from the palace gate to the foot of the mountain, and the grass and trees on both sides of the blue stones had also been trimmed. There were only some troubling things. It was the season of falling flowers, and a gust of wind filled the ground. This is a sunny day, and the pear blossoms on Jiuwei Mountain are in full bloom. At the same time, the Emperor Ji of the Fong tribe, who is 2,300 years old this year, is also at the time of her grand wedding, with many guests and a festive atmosphere. The main hall could no longer accommodate this immortal, so countless positions were set up by the lake, 
such as under the clouds and snow trees filled with immortals, chatting and chatting, or in groups of three or five, or two people drinking wine, with laughter constantly in their ears. However, this lively scene hides some subtle emotions under the joy. For example, none of the guests on the mountain were members of the Changling Jun clan, for example, when the emperor and his concubine got married, the emperor disappeared without a trace, for example, the happy events they are discussing are not joyful in everyone's eyes. Qi Qing's face had stiffened with a smile, and he could hardly name these many guests, whether from the south wilderness of the East China Sea or the North Di of Qingqiu. In the afternoon, there was a burst of music in the air. A snow-dot-white eight-legged steed was pulling a long covered carriage, following dozens of travelers. The carriage broke through the layers of clouds and descended onto the lake in front of everyone's attention. The car door slowly opened, and the accompanying attendants immediately opened the satin umbrella. A slender and gentle creature emerged from it, followed by an extremely delicate and cold face. The blue long skirt brushed over the fallen petals of the crabapple and walked slowly to Qi Qing's side. The goddess bowed and bowed, and Qi Qing quickly supported her. Mrs. Bai Shi, she said Madam Bai Shi smiled and waved her hand to present a finely carved jade box. Master is currently practicing in seclusion and cannot attend the wedding of my junior sister. Therefore, I have sent my concubine here to offer my congratulations, she said who is Madam Bishi. The guests whispered and some mocked, saying, this is the wife of the Qing Emperor, with an extremely noble status. She has long lived in seclusion and only shows love and affection to the Emperor. If it weren't for the grand wedding of Emperor Huaning and his concubine today, she might not have been able to see her for ten thousand years. Madame Bai Shi opened the gift box and saw two sparkling white bracelets lying in the dark soft satin. Their color was like snow, and they were filled with divine radiance. The obscure and ancient runes were faintly visible, and upon touching them, one felt comfortable all over. Qi Qing smiled and said, I would like to thank Tai Wei Jinren on behalf of Emperor Ji. Madame Bishi smiled lightly and said, the real person has long stopped asking about the world of mortals. This ring is the result of his lifelong efforts. He instructed me to personally watch the two newlyweds put it on, so I had no choice but to bother. Qi Qing extended his hand to respectfully invite, Madam, it is a fortunate occasion for you to come to Jiwei Mountain. Madam, please take your seat. After a pause, your highness is dressing up. Please wait a moment, madam. Mrs. Bai Shi covered her lips and said, she doesn't necessarily want to see me. As he spoke, he walked into the inner hall. What is that? Faced with Fu Wei's doubts, Huan Ning couldn't help but say, although Master has always been a bit disrespectful, I shouldn't have given any strange gifts for this big wedding. It was Bai Shi who came unexpectedly. This is an exquisite viewing platform by the unnamed lake in Qingyang Palace. From here, guests can be seen coming and going, but few people pay attention to it. Not long after, a few more regulars arrived. They are colleagues from Sanchen Division. The Minister of Dust and Fate, who is in charge of human relationships, has not had much interaction with Huan Ning. The Minister of Dust and Fate, Bai Mu, sent a hundred-turn glass lamp as a congratulatory gift. Although it is a gift for newlyweds in the mortal world, it can hold time and be kept indoors for several years. With just spiritual touch, it can reflect all the good things of the past, which can also be considered a wonderful thing. However, Chao Chen Dao, on the other hand, was the leader of the Qing Fan sect, Bo. The indifferent female fairy gifted a pair of immortal cups, in which water was poured and beautiful wine poured. Qing Fan said, Our company's head is in urgent need and cannot come to the banquet. I hope the priest will not be surprised. Qi Qing said yes. I saw the demon slaying department again. Not to mention the head of the department, it was actually a sword-wielding envoy under Huan Ning who sent two immortal swords. After putting down the sword, he retreated and hurriedly left. It seems that the demon slaying department and the Chouchen department really have a hundred thousand urgent matters to attend to. 
most of the guests behind were from afar, and Huan Ning gradually felt bored. He grabbed Fu Wei's hand and was about to leave when he heard a charming smile from behind. Huaning Junior Sister Huan Ning sighed in his heart, but a bright smile immediately appeared on his face. Senior Sister Bishi, he said Fu Wei gave her a slight bow, and Bai Shi also accepted it. She said, Junior Sister, why don't you look so happy? Today's big wedding, don't let anyone see it. Huan Ning smiled more brightly and said, where am I unhappy? Bai Shi took out the box from her sleeve and pulled out a bracelet as she walked over. Master said it's necessary for you to wear it yourself, junior sister. Don't let it down, she said Huan Ning avoided without leaving a trace, while Bai Shi refused to back down. The two of them pushed and shoved with a smile on their faces for a long time. Finally, Bai Shi took a step back and stroked his hair at the temples. It's okay, I'll personally help you put it on when that Changling lord arrives, he said seeing Madam Bai Shi leave with Shi Shi Ran, Fu Wei was quite puzzled and said, I remember she had a good relationship with you before. Huan Ming sighed and said, there's nothing I can do. Being too excellent always attracts resentment. Although you don't deal with her, you're wearing a wristband. Why push her away? Huan Ning straightened his sleeves and remained noncommittal. This was supposed to be a double ring. I didn't even see the face of the Shark King, so she was anxious for me to wear it. It's not appropriate for you Li, he said however, when it comes to it, Huan Ning herself is also very puzzled. She has a mediocre relationship with this senior sister, but one is the Empress Qing and the other is the Empress Qingyang, both of whom have the same blue character. They are all descendants of the ancient divine race, but they have not reached the point of tearing their faces apart. But a while ago, she was ordered to go to Maishan to strangle a demon fox. In the demon fox cave, she found a sword tassel that contained a divine charm and was also considered a top-dot-notch spiritual weapon. It took her a lot of effort to subdue the fox. Huan Ming looked familiar and vaguely remembered that it was worn by the Qing Emperor. She casually brought it back and returned it to the Qing Emperor in front of her when reporting her work. With this delivery, something went wrong, and Bai Shi's face immediately turned snow.white. Later, I heard that this loving couple had a big argument. When they saw Huan Ming again, Bai Shi's eyes were like knives, eager to poke a few holes in her body. However, Huan Ming had no intention of promoting it on her behalf. It was just that this senior sister had a relatively small aura and had been calculating every detail until now, and now she didn't know what kind of caution she was carrying. End of this chapter Chapter 10 The Arrival of the Shark King You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 The Arrival of the Shark King Huan Ning's gaze drifted towards the distance, and he saw the clouds and mist gradually dispersing at the foot of the mountain. But just now, I quietly tried it and it was indeed the master's hand. Among them, there is abundant spiritual power and it is a top-dot-grade artifact, but I don't know what its purpose is. The guests had gradually taken their seats, and it was getting late. The Shark King had come from the western wilderness and had not yet arrived. Huan Ming was pulled by Qi Qing to put on her makeup again, and the twilight hung over the Qingyang Palace. The newly hired maid approached her in her later years and asked a small question. In the clothes that Empress Dowager wore back yesterday, there is an object that I don't know how to handle. Huan Ming was frowning and glanced lightly upon hearing the words. On the palm of my late age's outstretched hand, a small bottle of sparkling white spirit jade lay quietly on top. Huan Ming has always been cautious and never uses drugs given by others. Even if this item is not detected as abnormal, it will not be used easily. She had intended to say that she had disposed of it casually, but after some thought, she said, put it in the compartment behind the study. That young man is generous in his spending, and this item is also of extraordinary quality. There's no need to owe him this favor. I'll bring him back next time, but now he's dressed in fancy clothes and I don't know where the storage pendant is. It's better to leave it in the study for now. While speaking, 
I suddenly heard a green phoenix crowing outside the palace door, clear and loud, with a gentle ending that pierced through the sky. Qingwan dances with her neck crossed, and the wind suddenly rises, rolling up thousands of tang flowers by the lake. The noisy guests suddenly fell silent. Qi Qing said softly. The western wilderness shark king has arrived. The sound of the phoenix stopped, and the car also landed. It was not as luxurious as the immortals had imagined. It was just a sedan chair carried by eight eagle slaves, with a top made of black gold and a dim glow. The red ribbon and shark mantle hung down, tightly covering the people inside, only revealing the slender figure that was faintly visible shark, unexpectedly appeared in such an ordinary way. The sparrow immortals did not stop, simply lifting the sedan chair towards the inner courtyard. This shark king is like marrying into Jiuwei Mountain, just like marrying in the mortal world, and this first side cannot be easily revealed. Interesting. Huaning looked down from the railing on the second floor. She was already a bit drunk, and a slight smile appeared on her cold face. She turned around and asked the maid, they all say that Shark Jun is beautiful. How about letting everyone appreciate it? The maid was stunned and said, I'm afraid your highness too cannot agree. Huan Ying's smile grew stronger. The eagle slaves have always worked together, but they have been running around and are inevitably tired. At this time, if someone falls off some chains, many troubles will arise. So when a small spiritual ball hit the eagle slave's calf at the end of the tail, turning into a fine needle piercing pain, he couldn't help but kneel down and hit his knee heavily in the gravel. The other few people were also in disarray, and the one sedan chair tilted and fell heavily to the ground. The guests held their breath, and the atmosphere was a bit subtle. The field is quiet, and the sound of needles falling can be heard. Just a moment later, one hand lifted the shark's mantle. The wide crimson sleeves hang down softly, swaying gently with each movement, as gentle as a flowing cloud and as gentle as a gentle breeze. And the hand that stretched out from the splendor was slender, with distinct joints, but its color was extremely white. The scorching red sleeves and pale hands reveal the ultimate charm from a silent place. Sha Jun walked out from inside without any concealment of his appearance. As soon as he appeared, the guests only felt that the bright light in the hall had dimmed slightly. He is not short, even tall, but he makes people feel thin out of thin air, he is not feminine. His clothes are just simple chiffon, without any embellishments. The colors are extremely bright, but it inexplicably reminds people of the lonely mountains of Qingjun. Why embellish such a beautiful appearance with pearls and jade? At this moment, Goddess Wang Shu drove over Jiuwei Mountain. Under the young man's beautiful eyebrows, there was a slight cinnabar mole, which taught people to distinguish an indescribable beauty under the silver moonlight. Just as everyone had their own thoughts and remained silent, the young man had already walked to the injured eagle slave's side. With his long robe on the ground, he gently lifted him up regardless of dirt and handed him over to others for assistance. Thank you all for your hard work. I can leave on my own. Young Shark Jun's eyebrows are like distant mountains, his voice is like flowing streams, but under the gaze of the immortals, his eyes remain quiet and warm, and his breath is steady and long. Without any shame or joy, it seemed that he was not the protagonist of this wedding banquet, but rather a dreamer disturbed by falling flowers and sparrows under the moon. Huan Ning had already left the side hall and was about to go out to welcome the Shark King when he happened to encounter this scene. Emperor Huan Ning, who was used to seeing beautiful women, was also stunned for a moment. A cry of surprise came from beside her, and Princess Fuwei covered her vermilion lips. A familiar light appeared in her eyes, Ning Ning. A simple two words are enough to express the excitement in the heart of Empress Fu Wei. After being surprised, the first Shen Guan Qi Qin to react quickly stepped forward and guided the young man, Shark, Emperor Ji has been waiting for you for a long time, please. The young man turned his head and spoke in a clear and faint voice, Qi Qin, my name is Sang Yen. Qi Qin was taken aback for a moment. In fact, he knew that Shark Jun was calling Sang Yen, 
but subconsciously refused to call his name. The two words Shark June were just reminding the young man to pay attention to the fact that he was a demon tribe and denying his identity as Emperor Ji Lord. But this Shark King, who had never seen him before, still knew his name. Obviously, Shi Huang attached great importance to this grand wedding. And they, Jiu Wei Mountain, not only didn't care, but even didn't want to shout the name of Sha Jun. When he regained his senses, the young man was watching him gently, not a bit angry. So now, please lead the way, he said Chi Qing didn't know why he felt a little hot on his face. Although it wasn't summer yet, he instinctively wiped his sweat. This time, he said, Lord Sang Yen, please come with me. No need, I have already come. A light smile spread throughout the hall, and in front of everyone's eyes, the other protagonist of this big wedding walked through the hall and appeared in pink. Empress Dowager was dressed more extravagantly than ever before. As she moved, her hair swayed with tassels, and gold and silver embroidery danced between her skirts, creating a starlight-like hue highlighted by the moonlight. When she stood still, everyone couldn't help but sigh. It is really difficult for anyone to fully express the words, Qin Yan, and when paired with that elegant and refined red dress, it adds a few strands of charm to this lotus-like face. My name is Huan Ning. Emperor Huaning looked up, reaching up to the young man's chin. Seeing his soft and elegant lines, she slowly lifted her slender eyelashes, revealing the clear and beautiful eyes of a deer. She went to hold his hand, and her soft and boneless hand was adorned with jade and petals, even delicately depicted with bright red cardamom on her nails. Afterwards will be your immortal couple. She smiled, pure and gentle, come with me. End of this chapter